Hi, I'm Jeff Bartles, Infrastructure Technical Specialist at Autodesk, and today we're going to be looking at an extension of the Technical Academy series called Infrastructure Design Suite Workflows. In this session, we're going to learn how to create a customized guardrail for use in InfraWorks. This session will represent part two of the workflow. On my screen is an image that represents the motivation for this project. This is a photo of an existing bridge. There's going to be a bridge reconstruction in this area. I'm in the process of creating an InfraWorks model of this site. And right here in the foreground, we can see the guardrail that I started working on in the previous lesson. Let me jump over to InfraWorks for just a second so I can show you that I have the majority of the existing site modeled. The only piece of the puzzle I have left is the guardrail here on the northwest corner of the bridge. If I jump over to Civil 3D, we can see where I left off. Right here I have my bridge model. Let me zoom in and we can see the guardrail to the extent that it's created at this point. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer. In this session, we're going to create the flared end that connects the guardrail to the bridge. I'm going to start by changing the workspace. I'll do that by opening the workspace menu and I'll choose 3D modeling. This gives me access to the AutoCAD modeling tools. Then to start the flared end, I'm going to create a copy of this face at the end of the rail. I'll do that by coming up to the solid editing panel. I'll open this menu in the middle and I'll choose copy faces. I will then zoom in and I'll click right in the middle of this face. Now, I didn't get the one I wanted. Sometimes that happens. Let me hit escape and I'll cancel out of the command. One way to ensure that you always get the face that you want is to change the visual style here to 2D wireframe. In fact, I prefer to work in 2D wireframe because it allows me to see more of my model. Let me come up and launch copy faces again, and I'll click in the middle of this face. I'll press enter. And then for my base point, I'll type zero comma zero, and I'll press enter twice. I will then choose exit to get out of the command. So I have made a copy of this face. Now let's copy that face over to the bridge. I'll do that by launching the traditional copy command. Select objects. I'll click the face and press enter. Let's pick this up from the top back corner. And I'm going to tap the F8 key to turn off my ortho. And I'm going to move this to a point nearest this edge. I'll press escape. Let me orbit this around. I'll just hold the shift key in the mouse wheel. And then for just a second here, we can change the visual style back to conceptual so we can see how things are going. There's that face. That looks pretty good. Now that I have the face in position, let's scale it up. I need, I need to make it larger. So I'm going to use the traditional scale command. Select objects. I'll type L for last. That's the last object I made. Let me press enter for base point. I'll choose the top back corner and let's use a scale factor of 1.5. I'll press enter. That looks pretty good. Let's center that face now within this area. I'll do that by launching the move command. What do I want to move? L for last. Enter. Where do I want to pick it up? Let's pick it up from the quadrant of this edge and we'll place it to the midpoint of this edge. Now that's not too bad, but these obviously aren't parallel, so there's a little bit of overlap going on. Not a problem. Let's launch move. What do I want to move? L for last. I will pick it up from a, the end point right here, and let's place it to a point nearest the edge here. That looks pretty good. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is an existing model. We're not building it from exact dimensions. Now to create my flange or my flare, I'm going to use the loft command. Loft allows me to select two cross sections or more if I want to, and it will create a solid in between them. Now to make these objects a little easier to select, I'm going to change my visual style back to 2D wireframe. We can find the loft command here in the extrude menu. Let me choose loft and I'll select my first object and I'll come over and select my second object and I'll press enter. I'd like to create this loft using cross sections only. And that's it. Let me switch the visual style back to conceptual. There we go. We can see the flared end. Let's tip this up. Looks pretty good. Now at this point, I'd like to add some materials and I'll do a little bit of cleanup. I'll eliminate this post that I made earlier. Let's tip this up and see if we can get a good look at the guardrail. I'll pan this over to the side and let me close this unnecessary palette. 
Let's go to the Visualize tab, and then I'm going to click the Materials Browser button to bring up the palette. Now I already have a material in the model that I'm using for the other guardrails. It's this one right here, Satin Brushed. I'd like to apply this material to all of these objects. Let me start by zooming in, and just for a second I want to show you something. Let me take Satin Brushed, I'll drag it over and drop it on one of these posts. And notice it doesn't do anything. Well, I guess I'm using Conceptual. Let me switch that to Realistic. Notice these don't look any different. That's because, remember, these are blocks. You cannot apply a material to a block. So let's explode these. I'll do that by selecting one of them. I'll right-click, and I'll choose Select Similar. That gets them all. And then I'm just going to type Explode. Now if I hover over one of these, I can see it's a 3D solid. To apply the material, I'm actually going to work in reverse. I'll select the objects first, and then I will uh, come over and click my material. To select the objects, I'm going to hit Control-1. This brings up my Properties palette. From here I can choose the Select Objects button, and I'm going to take advantage of my previous selection. I'll type P and hit Enter. So that selects all the posts. I'll select the rail and the flare. And I'll press Enter. After all of those objects are selected, I'll come over to my Materials browser and I'll choose Satin Brushed. I'll press Escape a couple times when I'm finished. So now the material's been added to all of those objects. Let me go ahead and close the palette. And at this point, I can export this geometry for use in InfraWorks. Now you can see I have the whole bridge here, but you know what, I was just using the bridge for placement purposes so that we can see the guardrail in context. We saw that the bridge is already in the InfraWorks model, so really the only thing I have to export is this new guardrail. To do that, let me go back to the application menu. I'll choose Export. I'll come down and choose FBX. And I'm going to save this in my Extras folder. We'll call it Northwest Retaining Wall. I'll click Save. I'd like to export selected entities. Let me click the Select Objects button. And I'm going to type P for Previous. Take advantage of the previous selection set. I'll press Enter. I'm going to be exporting the objects and the materials, and I'd like the materials embedded. Let me click OK. And that's it. This geometry was exported as an FBX model. I can now import this into InfraWorks. Once again, I'll jump back to InfraWorks. Let's open the main menu. I'll choose Data Sources. And then I'm going to open the Insertion menu here, and I'll choose 3D Model. We'll select the retaining wall we saved in the previous session. I will then double click to configure. And I'm going to tell InfraWorks that this object represents a city furniture. For a coordinate system, I'm going to use the Hawaii coordinate system I've been using before. Let me just select that. Since the Sybil 3D geometry is on a coordinate system, this should drop right in where it's supposed to. Let me collapse this a little bit and I'll choose Close and Refresh. And we can see the guardrail popped in right where we needed it. Now that I'm finished, let me close the Data Sources panel. Let's go to the bookmark. We'll choose Guardrail Top, just to get a look at this. We'll go back to the Guardrail view, and we can see this looks very similar to the image where we started. If you found this content helpful, please rate it by clicking the thumbs up icon. This will help other AKN users identify valuable content. On behalf of Autodesk, this is Jeff Bartles saying thank you for watching.